Good evening. Good evening, family in Christ, and welcome to evening prayer from St. Michael and all angels on the day of Pentecost, with Sunday. <coughs> we begin with the seasonal sentence for Pentecost found on page 61. God's love has been shed abroad in our hearts through the Holy Spirit he has given us. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father forever. Amen. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our canticle, O Gracious Light, found on page 63. O Gracious Light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices. O, o Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Let us now confess our sins. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Let us take a moment as we review the day that has passed and identify those areas where we have fallen short of God's desires for us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, in your compassion Forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and save you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, merciful Lord, to your faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins, and serve you with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our appointed psalm for this evening is Psalm 145. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name for ever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall lord your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works I will meditate. The might of your awesome deeds shall be proclaimed and I will declare your greatness. They shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all and his compassion is over all he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. 
The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways, and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, beginning at verse 9. You shall count seven weeks. Begin to count the seven weeks from the time the sickle is first put to the standing grain. Then you shall keep the festival of weeks to the Lord your God, contributing a free, free will offering in proportion to the blessing that you have received from the Lord your God. Rejoice before the Lord your God, you and your sons and your daughters, your male and female slaves, the Levites resident in your town, as well as the strangers, the orphans and the widows who are among you, at the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. Remember, that you were a slave in Egypt and diligently observe these statutes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now turn to page 67 and recite the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in you, O God, my Savior, for you have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you, from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm, and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things, and the rich you have sent away empty. You have come to the help of your servant Israel, for you have remembered your promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our second lesson, a reading from the book of John, chapter 14, beginning at verse 21. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home in with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, 
will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you love me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> Thanks be to God. We now turn to page 55 of our Books of Common Prayer and recite the song of Simeon. Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. We now turn to our reflection for this evening, and our reflection comes from our psalm, appointed psalm this evening, Psalm 145. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. This psalm, Psalm 145, should stir up in us modern-day believers the kind of thoughts and feelings about God that we should have. Think about people who were living over 2,000 years ago without many of the modern conveniences that we take for granted today. For them, life might have been very boring in comparison. Yet, those who worshipped using this psalm experienced a level of happiness and trust in God that we struggle to match today. Nothing should lift our spirits and bring more joy to our hearts like doing just what Psalm 145 says, like praising a God, our God, our Savior. When we praise God, something supernatural always happens our, in our circumstances, but often in our hearts. Impossibilities crumble. Problems seem to have solutions. We begin to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Healing takes place. Depression, fear, anxiety are cast out and our souls are revived as we magnify and glorify the Lord. Of course, we all know about discouraged feelings, depression, and the many negative things that we are faced with day to day. But there is nothing like praising God out loud to restore our joy. Have you ever noticed whenever you are in church and we sing and get involved in a praise and worship session, how it automatically lifts your spirits. For no apparent reason, you begin to feel better. <coughs> we are never to let the absence of praise feelings keep us from doing just that. We are to let our hearts reach out to those statements of praise that seem beyond us and make them our own. It is when we least feel like doing it that is when we should most definitely put every effort that we can into praising and worshiping God. Excuse me. <coughs> Sometimes joy, praise, singing, and shouting in the Psalms reveals to us how far our hearts are from where they should be. But the purpose of praise in the Psalms 
is not to condemn us, but to tug on our heartstrings and ask us to go to new heights of worship and delight in the Lord. Psalm 145 begins with a vow. It is a vow to praise God every day and to do it for as long as we live. This means we are to exalt him above everything, to let our fellow men and women know our high opinion of God. The ultimate purpose of our lives as believers is to worship, magnify, and glorify the Lord. When you choose this as your life's purpose, you know what to do when you are faced with difficulties or times of abundance. As always, praise God. No matter what happens to you, you have already determined that you are on a mission to praise God. Paul said, My eager expectation and hope is that Christ will be exalted in my body, whether I live or I die. When you vow to worship God, in good or bad, it solves the problems of disappointment, death, and disaster, because nothing in life can keep you from this purpose of praising God. If your purpose was to have a perfect life with a perfect spouse and family, safety, money, and a perfect job, well, unfortunately, we all know and have seen things that ruin these ambitions in a flash. And so, if these are where your life's purpose is centered, you may find yourself constantly disappointed, scared, and definitely self-centered. But when your goal is to magnify God, you can do that no matter what happens. Your life becomes simpler and clearer, and you know why you are here in this world. If you begin to say, praise God, you will begin to live the victorious life. Talking this way defeats our enemies and overcomes our problems. It is the medicine we need for the many broken hearts that we suffer, the worry that is constantly before us. It opens up <clears throat> great fountains of peace and joy in our hearts. This is one of the most important things that you can ever do in life. Praise God, no matter what your circumstances, because it gets at the root of the challenges that we face in our lives daily. Either we are on the throne or God is on the throne. Either our comfort and personal desires are lifted up high or God is lifted up high. We cannot serve God and our worldly pleasures. A choice must be made. This is often, for many, not an e easy decision to make. Many have decided, unfortunately, to serve themselves. But, brothers and sisters in Christ, this unfortunately will put you on a wide road with a big gate that leads to destruction. The choice of being self-seeking will cost us our lives. For worldly desires do not honor God. We show God's power in our lives by the daily choices that we make, but also by how we speak and conduct ourselves. Psalm 145 calls us to bless to praise, to sing, to speak out loud to God and about God. Praise is spoken. Praise is not quiet. We cannot just think, oh, God is great. No, we have to say it out loud, sing it, and sometimes shout it out from the rooftops with the spirit of boldness that we have received through the Holy Spirit. King David of Israel said in Psalm 40, I have not hidden your saving help within my heart. 
I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and faithfulness from the great congregation. Family in Christ, we are to share those stories, those many stories, those things that God has done in our lives, the goodness that he has bestowed upon us. Our praise should be great because God is great. The Lord is worthy of our most unreserved and enthusiastic praise. We praise God for his power in creation, for his love to us in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and for his grace in offering us salvation. Yet we know his power, his love, his grace are far beyond what we can imagine or comprehend. James Montgomery Boyce, whose commentary many of us use, the Boyce commentary, said this psalm um, is a summary of all that King David had learned about God during a lifelong relationship with the Almighty. If only we had the revelations in this psalm personally, we could come to know God and love Him and understand how worthy He is of our praise. Some of the reasons that we should praise God simply are 1. The many great and powerful things that He has done throughout history and in our lives. King David calls these mighty acts, awesome deeds, wondrous works. We tell our children and grandchildren about how God created the heavens and the earth. We share stories of God's miraculous provisions for the saints whom we venerate. We share our own testimonies about how God saved many from Satan death and, in many cases, personally healed us. We talk about the powerful works of the Holy Spirit on today. Pentecost, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and His guiding us into all truth and knowledge. God is always good to us. Did you have somewhere comfortable to sleep last night? Did you receive your daily bread today? Do you have clean clothes to put on? Have you seen the great beauty in God's creation which surrounds each and every one of us? If these things are true, then you can speak about God's abundant goodness to us. The Lord is upright in all his ways and kind in all his works. God is good and kind because he is righteous. There is nothing evil in God. He has no evil intent towards us his children. We praise God for his faithfulness, kindness, compassion and unfailing love. In verse 8 of Psalm 145 we read, The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He doesn't just love us a little bit. He doesn't just love us a lot. He loves us more than we can believe is possible. That is who God is. God is love. We praise God also because He is so merciful to each and every one of us, especially when we fail over and over again or feel that we are at our lowest. Verse 14 says, The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. Do you feel like you are falling or failing or that you are at a bad place right now? God is right there holding you up. That is who he is. We praise him because he supplies all our needs 
and satisfies our desires. God satisfies both our outward and inward desires. Of course, He provides for us food and clothing. And this is no small blessing, pardon me. But much more importantly, He satisfies the needs, He satisfies the needs of our souls with His presence and loving kindness. How much more of a reason could you want to praise and worship Him? He who satisfies the needs of our souls. Let us remember that being cast into the outer darkness means that we will never be able to feel God satisfying the needs of our souls and that alone is torment, more torment than most can even believe or think about. We worship God because he walks with us each and every day on every step of our life's journey. In verse 18 we read, The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Notice that word, we must call on him in truth. We praise him for his presence, for being at our side. We thank him for never leaving us. Whether you want to believe it or not, family in Christ, God is always near to each and every one of us. When we think we are at our lowest and we are crawling, it is actually God who is lifting us up and carrying us. He is doing all the work that we cannot do for ourselves. Finally, God is eternal and his kingdom is everlasting. As human beings, we come and go. One moment we are here, the next moment we are gone. Especially in these days, whenever you miss someone and you inquire about them, usually it's because they have gone. We are very insignificant and fragile when compared to all of creation. Yet we are connected to an eternal God who has an everlasting kingdom. And if we are obedient and faithful to him, we will be with him forever. God also watches over each and every one of us who loves him and keeps us safe. The Lord preserves all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. He watches over us day and night. He doesn't sleep the way we do. But the wicked, ah, they will be destroyed. Maybe not in our time, but in God's time. We must never mistake patience for acceptance of what is wrong. These are very strong words, but we worship God for always being upright and virtuous in his judgment. David began this psalm with a resolution to praise God one that we would all do well to imitate. Then after providing some reasons why he was determined to worship God, he ends the psalm in a like manner and calls on all godly people to join him in praising and giving joyous worship to God. Every day we always have talk going on in our heads literally every moment of the day and at other times we are busy uttering a lot of words let us determine to use these thoughts and words to give God praise and thanks may God give us the steadfast determined hearts like David to praise him every day no matter what is happening 
in our lives. I have said these words to you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We now turn to page 69 of our Books of Common Prayer and recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We now turn to page 44 and recite Suffrages C. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them, now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. We now turn to page 171 for the collect for the day of Pentecost, with Sunday. Almighty God, on this day you open the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel and the administration of holy sacraments, that it may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We now return to page 71, and we will say the first and the second prayers found on that page. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, creator of the day and night, giving rest to the weary, renewing the spirit of those who are spent, bestowing upon us occasions of song in the evening. As you have protected us in the day that has passed, so be with us in the coming night. Free us from evil, sin, and fear, for you are our light and salvation and the strength of our life. To you be glory for endless ages. Amen. Lighten our darkness, Lord, we pray, and in your mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A collect for Sundays found on page 72. O God of peace, you have taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
prayer of dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and save all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as we go forth and engage in our daily duties in the week ahead, let us always find moments to give God praise and thanks for the manifold blessings which he has bestowed upon each and every one of us. Have a blessed evening. <laughs>